that we had our flight readiness review this morning for landing. We really took the time to review um, the vehicle on orbit. You know, it's been on orbit for about 63 days. We talked uh, pre-flight about having capability to go 120 days. The systems on Dragon are doing very well. The spacecraft is very healthy. We went through all the systems, uh, any issues or problems that we saw on orbit in terms of how the vehicle responded to the thermal environment and the different parts of space. We reviewed the readiness of the ops teams and also the recovery teams. And so we came out of the FR with a, with a go to proceed toward uh, undock, the orbit and landing. Um, uh, today, I'll talk a little bit about the landing operation and kind of how things will unfold over the next few days and a little bit about decision making. If we could show the graphic uh, first, we have seven landing sites that we're going to be using, as Jim said, for the landing uh, as early as uh, Sunday. You can see these sites, they're spread across Florida, Pensacola, Panama City, Tallahassee, and Tampa. Those are, uh, Pensacola was there before, but we added the new sites of Panama City, Tallahassee, and Tampa since the initial flight readiness review. And then Jacksonville, Daytona, and the Cape on the uh, eastern coast of Florida. We added the Daytona site uh, after the flight readiness review and did uh, a bunch of work between NASA and SpaceX to ensure that site was ready. Um, over the next few days, we'll be carefully looking at the weather and getting ready for, uh, for the undock uh, and deorbit and landing. Uh, just a little bit of the sequence uh, for the earliest opportunity would be to undock on Saturday. The crew would wake up about 7.30 central time uh, here in Houston. We would close the hatches about 4.30 on Saturday and undock around 6.35 p.m. Central. And we have about a, an hour or so undock window. And then that would set us up for our first uh, landing opportunity on Sunday, deorbiting around uh, 12.56 uh, Central Time on Sunday, and then landing at about uh, 1.48 p.m. Central. Uh, we're going to watch the weather very carefully. You know, we have a series of sites and, and many days uh, in the future. If we don't undock uh, on Saturday uh, to, to come home on Sunday, we would move that undocking to Monday. So we'll watch this tropical storm that's probably going to form. It's a tropical uh, area of disturbed weather right now. Looks like it may be coming into the, the Florida area. And, and we'll kind of take it day by day. We have decision points and weather briefings at uh, about 24 hours prior to undock. Then at around six hours prior, prior to undock when we start to bring some cargo over from the space station and then two and a half hours prior to undock. So we'll have to evaluate the weather each day and just see things, how things unfold. Um, as Jim said, you know, this is a test flight and uh, we're going to take uh, our time to come home. We have plenty of opportunities here in August and we're in no hurry to come home. We've completed all the objectives really for the mission while we were docked. We, uh, figured out if four crew could live in Dragon habitability demo, we completed all those uh, objectives while docked. And so now is the right time to bring this vehicle back um, and then start the processing of this vehicle, which will go forward and fly again in the spring on crew two. And then finally, when we land, you know, the important thing after landing will be to review all the data from this flight. So the importance of getting the vehicle back, getting Bob and Doug safely back is to then go assess the data on this flight. Sets, that sets us up for the Crew-1 mission uh, as early as the end of September. And we'll go through the data methodically for that flight and make sure we're go ready to start the operational flights.